you, you can't not like him. He's just, I know that's a double negative. You can't not like him, but he's a terrific player, most improved player in the NBA, and he had a good rookie year, better a second year. De'Aaron Fox, the former Kentucky Wildcat, let us bring him on. Sacramento Kings, who, by the way, because I watch a lot of NBA basketball, the Sacramento Kings, as we noted several times on this show, were probably, well, they were the most interesting team not to make the playoffs, but a fun, fast, wild, crazy team. And how are you? I'm doing well. First, I want to say thank you guys for having me on. Oh, we love having you. Um, last time, in fact, you had the glasses. You looked like the young professor. Now, you've been in the league two years now. We were just talking about Zion. So if you could go to Zion and say, okay, here's, dude, here's how it works. You know, you went to Kentucky. He goes to Duke. Yep. If you could do your rookie season just a little bit over, what is the most jarring, crazy thing about being a rookie in the league? Oh, man. Well, first is just uh, the speed of the game. But I think he's going to – there are some people who just adjusted things like that. Right. Like, I felt like I was fast, but the speed of the game kind of caught me by surprise. Sure. And um, I think just being prepared for that. I think he's going to be fine. I think he's going to be – he's definitely going to be great. Yeah, he's got a magnetism. He'd be fun to play with. Um, so I, I want to talk about the Warriors because, you know, you play the Warriors regularly. Mm -hmm. So take my audience – to when you play Golden State, you were a great AAU player. You're a great college player. You're a great young NBA player. But the Warriors can be different. There's a certain, uh, take my audience into a game or two this year against the Warriors late in games. Because I think what really separates them is the last four minutes of mm -hmm. games. Take us there. Uh, but one thing, I think that, you know, everybody talks about their ball movement. Once you get to the last four minutes of every game, I think most teams play the same. You either have somebody that can isolate or you have someone that can operate in the pick and roll. And I think that that's where they become dangerous, where you have KD and Draymond in the pick and roll, and then you have Steph and Clay on the wing. And I think that that's where they're different because they don't, they don't turn the ball over in crunch time. They're going to make tough shots, and they're going to defend. That's now people that's say the Steph. The fourth, people say Steph's years. not a good defender. He's guarded you before. Can he defend a little? He can definitely defend, and he's a lot bigger and stronger than people give him credit for. Because you see him switch on a James, who's six six two twenty, and then you see him switch on a LeBron, who's six eight two sixty. He's a lot stronger and than, than than people are giving him credit for because he's you, you guys where everybody the games that everybody are watching are the games where he's being switched onto bigger and stronger people, but he's. He's not a bad defender. He's definitely not a bad defender. Let me ask this. You've played the Warriors with KD, and you've played without. So let's start. When you play the Warriors with KD, what's it like? With KD, I think it's almost... Well, we, we, we played four great games against him this past year. You did. And it's, it's extremely hard because do you... I think he's the best offensive player in the league. Mm -hmm. Do you double him? then who do you leave? Because they have five guys on the court that know how to play the game of basketball. They really do. And I think that it's, it's extremely different. You have a lot of guys who are good basketball players, but then you have people whose IQ and don't really know how to play the game. They, they made it, they can make it somewhere because of their athleticism or their talent. Yeah. They have guys where if you double off of them, who do you double off of? Kavon? Kavon knows to dive if you double off of him where he's going to get a shot that's a layup or a dunk. If you double off of Draymond, he's going to cut then he's going to catch the ball and he's going to either make a pass, he's going to shoot a layup, or he's going to dribble the ball and get someone else a shot. Then do you, you definitely don't double off of Clay or Steph. So it's, it's kind of pick your poison whenever he's playing. It's okay, hard. so now the Warriors, when KD's not there, I see a lot more movement. That's, that's, that's another thing. When he's not playing, the ball pops more. Then you kind of see Steph getting more shots. You see Clay getting more shots. And you see guys are getting off more. Now, De'Aaron, for you, when KD doesn't play... It seems to me it would be harder for you because you're chasing. Because when I watch them without KD, Steph is in constant motion. Oh, no, you're chasing them whether KD's playing or not. I had to guard Steph four times this year. It's, it's hard. Is it? Yeah, it's, 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 it's extremely hard to guard. Because he's like you have guys like Kyrie and Dame who do everything off the dribble. I think it's kind of easier to guard a guy like that. Like, it's not easy to guard it at all. But you're not using as much energy as when Steph throws the ball, runs to the other corner, catches it, does a couple of dribble moves, come off a pick and roll, throws it again, and then gets three down screens. It's, and it's not even a play. It's, it's just them knowing what each other wants to do. So I think it's, it's so hard guarding Steph. You, you have know, to be in the best shape of your life. Well, you're obviously, you have an incredibly high basketball IQ. How old are you, 20 years I'm old? 21. I mean, it, it's incredible. You're, you, you're, you're like you're sending a coach. And it is interesting. I've always said this about the NBA. The last two dynasties, Golden State and the Miami Heat. Mm -hmm. Look at the IQs. 
Battier, Wade, Haslam, LeBron, Ray Allen, Steph, dad played, Clay, dad played, Durant, Draymond. Intelligence in this league is wildly underrated because unlike football where there are breaks in between plays mm -hmm. or baseball where I pitch and we wait, basketball is fluid. And so everything's a reaction. Everything's a reaction. So I think the Warriors, I will say this about Toronto. Let's talk about your games against Toronto. Sure. They don't have as much talent, but they got a lot of dudes, Darren, that have been in this league for a long mm -hmm. time. That is a smart Raptor team. Now, you've played them. What are those games like? Um, so I actually only played Toronto once this year. So, cause the, the one game I played 81 games this year. So that game, I, I, I sat that game, but, um, man, that's a, that's a great team. And you have guys that come off the bench, like, uh, Fred Van Vliet had a great game against us as well. So it's, that team isn't as talented as you said, as, as you said, just like the Warriors, but man, they play well together. Mm -hmm. Kyle Lowry, even if he's not putting the ball in the basket, he's drawing charges, he's getting rebounds, he's, he's setting screens, um, we didn't play him when Mark Gasol, when Mark was there just yet, but yeah. um, you have Serge. Serge is gonna he's gonna make shots. He's gonna block. He's gonna block shots. He's gonna rebound. Kawhi is gonna do what Kawhi does. He's gonna defend. He's gonna get steals. He's gonna rebound. He's gonna put the ball in the basket. Uh, Pascal, man, he's been great this year. He's one of the fastest guys in the league at the four yeah, he's six a, ten for his size. He runs great. He runs like a like a deer, just down, right. going, going getting down the court. He's he's gonna if he's not making shots, he's gonna get to his spots. He's still gonna rebound, and they have just a group that plays hard. Everybody on their team plays hard. They defend. They take charges as a, as a, they play as a unit. And I think I had Warriors in six because I think Kawhi will win will will them to one game at least. Even if the team doesn't play well, I think Kawhi can win them a game. And I think they're a good enough team to when they're playing well, they can. I think that they can beat the Warriors. Plus, Toronto's got that young, loud, lubricated crowd. They're it's a great it's a great place. To, I man, I, one thing I haven't played in Toronto yet because my rookie year I was hurt. When we played in Toronto. So I haven't played in Toronto yet. That's the one city that I haven't played in yet. Crazy. Young. We were talking about yesterday. It's a young franchise. Toronto's a young city. You know, it's like an, it's a crazy, diverse, wild, loud. Yes. It, and they want it so bad. Man, like we, we went to eat and like I hear people speaking French. You hear a bunch of different like it's a man. Toronto's a great city. I think it's, it's definitely one of the best NBA cities in the league. So I got to ask you about um I got to ask you about Sacramento because I really do think you guys are on the come. I think you're a very interesting franchise. Playing in Sacramento is kind of quiet. You went from Kentucky, which is glamour, <laughs> eyes, media, to kind of sleepy Sacramento. But you have flourished there. You know, we talk about all these guys like Durant wants to go to New York. And Kawhi wants to go to Los Angeles. But Paul George is like, I want to stay in Oklahoma City. What is it like? People always kind of look at all these small towns, you know, or smaller cities, Portland, Milwaukee. Mm -hmm. Playing in a smaller NBA city, do you like it? I definitely do like it. But the thing is, the similarity, there's a there's a lot more similarities in um in a small town team and a blue blood school. Now the thing is we might not have as many fans outside of the city, but in Sacramento, like we have a um our soccer team might be going MLS. Yeah. But other than that, like as far as professional sports, we have a AAA baseball team, so we're the only major sport that's there. So, so it's like everybody, Kentucky. Everybody's a Kings fan. So if you go to Kentucky, there's no major sport. You're either a Kings. I mean, you're either a Kentucky fan or you're a Louisville fan. We sell out every game because that's the event. That's what's to do in Sacramento. People come. So I think that there, there's a lot more similarities than people know than people think of. Like if you go to New York, some games feel like there's no one there because there's a lot more stuff that people are doing. Two NBA, two NFL, two Major League Baseball. So it's like teams. everybody's not there. Like you, like we played a game in Atlanta. It's, it's different. But if you go to a small town, if you go to a small team or a small town, you go to OKC. Every game sold out. Everybody's there, and I think that's why people love it. Like the fans are truly fans. Like we, Sacramento fans have gone through a lot. So the loyalty that that that's there, you just see it. Like you go, you can't go out. I can't go to Walmart without someone being a Kings fan. Like it's 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 different in every part of Sacramento. It's it's like that. By the way, you just you have a new agent, and everybody talks about these agents and players meeting. Who is your new agent? Uh, my agent is Chris Gaston, and he who, was. Where do you know him from? Who I've known since the seventh grade. Uh, he was my he was my trainer, but he's been through. He's had a lot of guys who he's either trained with or been friends with that have, you know, been in the NBA. So he's kind of he has. Of course, he hasn't doesn't have the agent experience, but. From from my standpoint, you trust him. 
I, I trust him with, with everything. I trust him with, with everything. That's all it's about. I have an agent. That's all it's about. Do I trust him? My dad used to have an old saying. He goes, your bosses will make most of their decisions when you're out of the room. So the agent, you better have somebody that shares your morals and values. Yep. Because those bosses are going to decide on you, and he's going to talk for you. And if it doesn't matter how glib he is and how funny, if he doesn't have your same values when you're in that room and you're not in the room and your agent's in the room, you're, you're, you're going to not like your agent. And it's really true. You picked your buddy that you respect, you trust. Yeah, and he'll, there will be things that he won't bring to me because he know I won't like it. So I just think it's, I think it's great for me to have somebody that knows me as as best as anybody, uh, you're going to have an amazing career. You really are. You're just going to want to. You're going to be one of these guys that plays in this league forever. Uh, you're, and you're easy to root for. And Sacramento is rolling. Loved having you on. Did it, for your 21 year old kid, you sound like a coach. I don't know if you ever wanted to be a coach, but when you're done playing, go into coaching uh, or broadcasting. I, I haven't won. I've been. I played at every level, so I don't know if I want to be a coach. <laughs> <laughs> Great seeing you again. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Uh, before you travel this summer, you need to get away, and I mean away luggage. They have an aluminum carry-on. They just sent it to me. It's the best luggage I've ever had. This stuff is fantastic. Uh, first of all, it's TSA approved. You can keep your belongings safe. Second of all, every suitcase with away luggage.